What's up guys? Welcome back to the Everyday Money Guy. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about why I don't think that there is going to be a housing crash in 2021 or in the near future. If this is your first time to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to grow your wealth, increase your success, and put you on the road to financial freedom. Also, be sure to hit the like button for me. I see a lot of the bigger YouTubers and pretty much anyone with a financial or real estate investing based channel talking about the possibility of a housing crash in 2021. And maybe it's just the ones that I subscribe to and it's kind of a positive feedback type of thing, but I don't really think that this is the case. Um, I believe that a lot of folks are feeling like this pandemic crisis feels like a catastrophe, very similar to the 2008 housing crash. And maybe it's just the fact that people maybe uh, want a crash or you know want to talk themselves into that there will be a crash so that they can afford to buy investments cheaper or perhaps get into a home themselves cheaper. But I just feel like it's all a lot of talk and that there's not going to be a crash in 2021 or really in the next couple of years. And I'm going to explain why I think this, but it's first I think it's important to talk about what happened in the crash of 2008 to really see what is different between then and now because I feel like it's a very different scenario. So the crash of 2008 was like I said, a completely different scenario, whereas the system was the problem. Housing was the problem. It was the cause of the crash. And it had deep roots that, that went back, you know, probably over a decade. But the, the basis of it is, is that they, banks were giving very risky loans. And then they were packaging those loans into collateral, collateralized debt obligations that were getting rated at triple a ratings from the rating agencies as being investment grade and then they were insured by major insurers that they would perform and these collateralized debt obligations were made up of adjustable rate mortgages that had very low teaser rates and then uh, adjusted in three to seven years or so to rates that were much higher and that the borrower could not afford in addition, banks were giving no documentation, loans, 0% down loans, and lending to subprime people, which is folks that don't have great credit scores. They uh, didn't necessarily have the correct debt to income ratios to be able to afford these houses. And in general, banks just loaned way too much money to people who couldn't pay for it. In the end, these mortgages went belly up as folks couldn't make their payments. They let them go into default, which made the CDOs, the collateralized debt obligations, also worthless and go to zero. And then the insurers that had to uh, insure these and pay out on those lost a ton of money. So the banks lost a ton of money, insurers lost a ton of money, financial markets pretty much froze overnight, major financial institutions collapsed, like Lehman Brothers, over 150 years old, collapsed. When all that happened, the economy went in the tank, jobs were lost, credit ratings were destroyed, savings were destroyed, and homes were lost, and it was just a massive meltdown. But the, the key to take away from this is that lending, uh, insuring that lending, and, and wrapping these terrible loans into financial instruments and in general housing was the cause of the 2008 housing crash and the recession that followed and the thing is is that the government where they did step in to bail out the industries they bailed out the banking industry they lent them trillions of dollars in order to free up financial markets so that businesses could make loans in addition, the Fed dropped the interest rates, which did help borrowers who could refinance, or and it helped out a lot of people who were buying for the first time or buying these dirt cheap foreclosure properties for investments. All of these things gradually helped the economy recover, the housing market recover, and since then it has been on a you know over 10 year tear, the housing market has. But the takeaway to all this is that the system itself was a mess. Housing was a mess. Lending was a mess. You know, bring a broom because it's a mess. 
So our latest market meltdown, our latest crisis is much different. The entire cause of the 2019 to 2020 financial panic, market panic, uh, whatever you want to call it, has been caused entirely by a virus, the COVID-19 virus, and the economic pain has mainly been caused by governments shutting down sectors of the economy in order to slow the spread of the virus. As far as housing goes, since the 2008 days, loans were done for the most part correctly. They had the correct documentation. Credit scores had to be very good to get the best loans and the best rates. You had to have 80% loan to value, meaning you had to put down 20% or you had to pay PMI. And just essentially everything with housing and loans has been done right. In addition, when the virus hit, the government stepped in and they took a lot of steps to help homeowners directly. For example, they paused mortgages and evictions. You could um, put your mortgage in forbearance for up to 12 months uh, under the CARES Act. They provided direct stimulus checks to individuals. And that was a, and so you could maybe pay your mortgage or maybe pay your rent so that your landlord could pay his mortgage, etc. They enhanced unemployment by adding $600 a week to a federal unemployment to the state unemployment that you would normally get. They instituted the Paycheck Protection Program, keeping people employed and keeping companies afloat. In addition, the, federal, the, the Fed lowered rates again to essentially zero, and that helped people refinance their debt. Um, you know, it, it affected all the interest rates with the Fed bringing their rate down closer to zero. In addition, a very quick stock market rebound, you know, kept people's wealth levels high and they had, you know, money in their accounts to do whatever they needed to do with it. All of this leads me to my reasons why I don't think that there is going to be a housing crash in 2021. I believe it comes down to simple supply and demand juiced up by extremely low interest rates from the Fed and as a byproduct, extremely low mortgage rates. There's just not a lot of homes on the market to buy right now. And there is a tremendous amount of demand as people still have good credit. They still have money in their pocket. A lot of them still have their jobs and they're, and they're not spending as much because they're not going out and they're not buying other things. In addition, housing starts are, have still not recovered to the level seen prior to the 2008 recession. And so with low inventory, low amounts of new inventory being brought to market, it just cre and in an extremely high demand, it creates a simple supply and demand. The price will continue to go up and then the very low interest rates that you can get on a 30 year fixed rate loan will continue to drive the prices of homes higher and higher. In addition to that, I don't see new housing starts accelerating anytime soon. The price of building materials has gone through the roof during this coronavirus pandemic. For example, a simple two by four by eight that I used to pick up at Home Depot that would cost around two to three dollars is now six to seven dollars. So you can see that builders probably don't have a very large profit margin, especially to build the lower priced homes that usually are needed to be built in order to really increase the inventory of homes on the market. So unless inventory increases or interest rates increase, I don't see a housing crash anytime in the near future. As a matter of fact, I feel like if either one would increase without the other, we still wouldn't see a crash or significant decline in housing prices in the near future. I mean, right now with the buying power of low interest rates, if inventory really took off, people would just snatch the homes up. And I have to believe that if the interest rates would go up without the inventory coming up, there would still be enough people with enough income to be able to pay the higher rate on uh, the same amount of home. But I don't see interest rates going up for the longest time 
either. So we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place if you are a real estate investor, if you are a home buyer, that prices are just going to either continue to accelerate or at the very worst, in my opinion, just go sideways for a couple of years if we just reach a point where the price is just where the market will bear. So that's my take on the housing market. I don't think that there will be a crash in 2021 or anytime else in the near future. If you disagree with me or you just have a comment to make, be sure to leave it in the comments. I try to answer all the comments as quickly as I can. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to grow your wealth, increase your success, put you on the road to financial freedom. Don't forget to like the video. It really helps out this video and the channel. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.